Nick's Pacific Street Saloon, restaurant and entertainment palace. Come in and be yourself, Nick. <laughs> That's Nick. I don't know what his name is. We call him the Arab. I'm Joe. And that's Willie, the marble game maniac. all the way down the line. This is a free country, ain't it? You can't beat that machine. Oh, yeah? to get me a watermelon. That's what I want. What do you want? Money or love or fame or what? You never get them reading the racing form. I like to keep abreast of the time. Hiya, Joe. Who saved your life? You did, Joe. How'd I do it? What? How did I do it? Joe, you know how you did it. I want you to answer me. How did I save your life? I've forgotten. Well, you made me eat all that chicken soup three years ago when I was sick and hungry. Chicken soup? Yeah. Three years ago? Was that long? Yeah, sure, Joe. Hmm. Tell me the whole story. Well, uh, well, you took me up to the doctor, and you gave me some money for my food and my clothes, and you paid my room rent. Oh, Joe, you know all the things you did. In good health now? Yeah. Got clothes? Yeah, sure, Joe. Eat three times a day, sometimes four? <laughs> sometimes five. Mm. Got a place to sleep? Yeah, sure, Joe. Well, then where in the blazes have you been? Well, Joe, I was out in front with the boys. They were talking about the trouble down the waterfront. Well, I want you to be around here when I need you. I will, I will. Now, here. Take this money and go down to the Emporium. You know where the Emporium is? Yes, yeah, sure, Joe. Take the elevator to the fourth floor. Walk around to the back to the toy department and buy me some toys. Bring them here. Yeah. Toys? What kind of toys? Any kind of toys. Little ones I can put on this table. What do you want toys for? What? All right, Joe, all right. You don't have to get sore at everything. Well, what are people going to think, a big guy like me buying toys? What people? Oh, Joe, you're always making me do these crazy things for you, and I'm the guy that gets embarrassed. I tell you. Okay. But I still wish I knew why. Right before you go, take this dime and put it in the phonograph. Number six and seven. Joe, what are you hearing those old songs anyway? I bet we listen to them ten times a day. Why can't we ever hear number 16 or 11 or 2 or something? There's lots of other numbers. Put the dime in the phonograph. Well, I'm glad I don't have to stay and listen to them. Sit down and hold still for number six. Oh. Then go get me the toys. Okay. 
never mind being a martyr about it either. The cause isn't worth it. <laughs> She's a good kid, Nelly. God bless her. Tom. Tom. We got everything straight? What? What do you mean, what? I just gave you some instructions. Well, what do you want, Joe? I want you to come to your senses. Oh, I got it, I got it. The Emporium, fourth floor in the back, the toy department, two dollars worth of toys that you can put on the table. Back here in a half hour. Don't get sidetracked anywhere. Just do as I tell you. Yeah. Joe. Can I bet four bits on the horse races? There's a long shot. Precious time. Gonna win by ten lengths. Joe, I gotta have some money. I thought you wanted him to get you a watermelon. I forgot. What's the dream? What? What's the dream now? What dream? What dream? The dream you're dreaming. Suppose he did bring you a watermelon. What would you do with it? I'd put it right here on the table. And I'd look at it. And then I'd eat it. What do you suppose I'd do with it? How should I know what you'd do with anything? What I'd like to know is where do you get your money from? What work do you do? <laughs> bring us a bottle of champagne. Champagne? Would you rather have something else? What's the big idea? Well, I just thought you might like some champagne. Yeah, but what's the big idea? You can't push me around. I dislike being unkind to another human being. Well, you be careful what you think about me. I have nothing but the noblest thoughts, both your person and your spirit. What are you talking about? You shut up! Oh. He owns his place. He's a very important man. All kinds of people come to him looking for work. Comedians, singers, dancers. I don't care. He can't call me names. Okay, sister, I know how it is with you dames in the morning. Don't you dare call me names. I, I used to be in burlesque. If you were ever in burlesque, I used to be Diamond Jim Brady. I was in burlesque. I, I played the burlesque circuit from coast to coast. I've had flowers sent to me by European royalty. I've had dinner with young men of wealth and social position. You're dreaming. You're a big girl. I'm an easy joint up the street. I wasn't burlesque. Kitty Duval, that was my name. Life size photographs of me in costume in front of burlesque theaters all over the country. I believe you. Have some champagne. Miss Duval? That's not my real name. That's my stage name. I'll call you by your stage name. All right, sister, make up your mind. You're going to have champagne with him or not? Pour the lady some wine. Okay, Professor, okay. But why you come to this dump instead of one of them high-class joints uptown is more than I can understand. Why don't you have champagne at the Park Plaza? Why don't you drink with the lady? Don't you dare call me names, you dentist. Dentist? What kind of cousin is that? Listen, this guy don't belong in here. The only reason I got champagne is because he keeps ordering it all the time. And don't think you're the only one he drinks champagne with. He drinks with all of them. He's crazy or something. Nick, I think you're going to be all right. In a couple of centuries. Sorry, I don't understand your English. To the spirit, Kitty Duval. Nick. Yeah. Would you mind putting another nickel in the phonograph? Number seven. Seven. I know, I know, I know. I don't mind at all, Your Highness. 
Although, personally, I'm not a lover of music. As a matter of fact, I think Tchaikovsky was a dope. Where did you ever hear of Tchaikovsky? He was a dope. Yeah, why? They talked about him on the radio one Sunday morning. He let a woman make a sucker out of him. I see. I stood behind that bar listening to the stuff and cried like a baby. None but the lonely heart. He was a dope. What made you cry, Nick? What? What made you cry? I don't know. I've been underestimating you, Nick. Get everybody worked up. They give everybody stuff they shouldn't have. He was a dope. I like champagne. And everything that goes with it. Big houses with big porches. Big rooms with big windows. And big trees. And big shepherd dogs sleeping in the shade. I'd walk out of the house and I'd... I'd look at the trees. And smell the flowers. And, and I'd run across the lawn and lie down under a tree and read a book. A book of poems, maybe. I'm going next door to Frankie's to make a bed. I'll be right back. Make one for me. Who do you like? Precious time. Precious time? Mm -hmm. Ten dollars. To show. On the note. Okay, it's your money. No. Oh, well. Oh, why do I always forget the number? What's the dream now, Kitty Duval? I dream of home. I always dream of home. I have no home. I have no place. Still, I dream of all of us together again. We had a farm in Ohio. There was nothing good about it. It was always sad. There was always trouble. But still, Still, I dream about it as if I could go back there. Mama would be there, and Papa, and my brother Louie, and my little brother Stephen. I'm Polish. Duval. My name is not Duval. It's Koronowski. Katerina Koronowski. She's lost everything. We moved to Chicago. We tried to work. We tried to stay together, but... My brother Louis got into trouble, and... I tried to help him. The fellow that Louis was with killed him for something. I don't know what. I'd like to forget about Chicago. I... What's the dream? I dream of home. Nick. Hello, Sunset 7349. May I speak to Miss Elsie Mandel Spiegel? You, Nick? I am Nick. Can you use a great comedian? Who, for instance? Me. You? What's funny about you? I dance. I do gags and stuff. In costume, or you're wearing your costume? All I need is a cigar. Do you supply it? Yeah. All right. Get funny. Okay. Now, I'm standing on the corner of 3rd and Market. I'm looking around. I'm figuring it out. It's all there, right in front of me. The whole city, the whole world. I see people going by. They're going somewhere. I don't know where they're going, but they're going. I ain't going anywhere. Where can you go? I'm figuring it out. All right, I'm a citizen. A fat guy bumps into an old lady. They were in a hurry. They bumped. Boom! What does it mean? Elsie? Oh, hold it a minute, will you please? Elsie? Elsie, 
Venus and Dudley. And Elsie, I'll jump in the bay if you don't marry me. Life isn't worth living without you. I, I can't sleep. I, I can't think of anything but you all the time, day and night and night and day. Elsie, I love you. I love you. What? Is this Sunset 7349? 7943? Well, well, what's your name? Uh, Lorene. Uh, Lorene Smith. Lorene? Lorene Smith? Oh, I thought you were Elsie Mandelspiegel. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> uh, what's your name? Dudley. Yeah, Dudley R. Bostwick. Yeah, R, it stands for Rao, but I never spell it out. Uh, pleased to meet you, W. Rao. I'm pleased to meet you, too. What? There's a lot of noise around here. Where am I? At Nick's on Pacific Street. I work at the SP. I told them I was sick and they gave me the afternoon off. Oh, wait a minute. I'll ask them. I'd like to meet you, too. Yeah, sure. I'll ask them. Hey, what's this address? Number 7 Pacific Street, you cad. Cad? You don't know how I've been suffering on account of Elsie. I take things too ceremoniously. I've got to be more lackadaisical. Hello, Eleanor. Oh, I mean, Lorene. It's number 7 Pacific Street. Number 7 Pacific. Oh! Wait till I get a pencil. I get down. Number 7 Pacific. I'll be there in a jiffy. And now, now you wait for me. Yeah, sure. I'll wait for you. How do you know me? Oh, you'll know me. I'll recognize you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dudley Rowell. Oh, 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 oh. oh, Elsie. Nobody's got a sense of humor anymore. The whole world's dying for comedy like never before. Nobody knows how to laugh. What I've gone through for Elsie. I got all kinds of funny ideas in my head to help make the world happy again. What in the world do I want to see a girl named Lorreen Smith for? Some girl I don't even know. See if you think this is funny. It's my own idea. I made this dance up myself. Sort of a speech, a political speech. Speak up. You hungry or what? Honest, I ain't hungry. All I want is a job. I don't want no charity. Well, what can you do? How good are you? Well, I can run errands, clean up, wash dishes, anything. You belong to a union? What union? For the love of Mike, where you been? Don't you know you can't walk into a place and ask for a job and get one and go to work just like that? You gotta belong to one of the unions. I didn't know. I've gotta have a job real soon. Well, you gotta belong to a union. I don't want any favors. All I want is a chance to earn a living. Go in the kitchen. Tell Sam to give you some lunch. Honest. I ain't hungry. No, he ain't hungry. Oh, Sam. Who's oh, all Make it nasty. Sit down here. We'll fix you right up. There, eat that. That'll make you feel better. Give him some chow mein and coffee, too. Why don't you tell me you were hungry? I, I didn't know I was that hungry. Feel better now, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll hold you for a while. Come in the bar when you feel like it. Uh, no checks, Sam. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? That's a new step. I'm a natural-born dancer and comedian. Look, you're no good. Why don't you try some other kind of work? 
Why don't you get a job in a store selling something? What do you want to be a comedian for? I've got something for the world, and they haven't got sense enough to let me give it to them. Elsie. Now I'm waiting for some girl I've never seen before. Lorraine Smith. Never saw her in my life. Just happened to get the wrong number. She turns on the personality, and I'm a cooked Indian. Give me a beer, please. Coming up. Hey, Nick, you gotta see my act. If I don't wow him, okay, I'll go home. If Vaudeville wasn't dead, a, a guy like me would have a chance. Listen, you're not funny. You're a sad young guy. What do you want to try to be funny for? You break everybody's heart. What's there for you to be funny about? You've been poor all your life, haven't you? I've been poor, all right, but don't forget that some things count more than some other things. What counts more, for instance, than what else, for instance? I think talent, for instance, counts more than money, for instance. That's what. And I've got talent. I get new ideas night and day. Everything comes natural to me. I've got style. I just need a little time to round it out, that's all. Frisco. Guy arrives, makes me stock up with champagne. B girls come in, holler at me that they're ladies. Talent comes in, begs me for a chance to show it. Even society people come in here once in a while. I don't know what for. Maybe it's the location. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe they can't feel at home anywhere else. Please dance with me. I never learned to dance. Well, anybody can dance. Just, just hold me in your arms. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't dance. I only wish I could. You'll have to excuse me. you've done for me, I'd do anything in the world for you, but you gotta give me some money once in a while. Take her out and show her a good time. Can you dance? Yeah. I won fourth prize at the Palomar five years ago. Dance with her. Dance with her? Yeah, Kitty Duval, the burlesque queen. I mean, queen of the world burlesque. Dance with her. She wants to dance. Ten minutes ago. Oh, no. You mean Dudley Bostwick, that old man in the wheelchair. Wheelchair? Yeah, Dudley Bostwick. That's what he said his name was. He said to tell you not to wait. Well. Are you sure you're not Dudley Raoul Bostwick? Who, me? Yes. Well, my name is Roger Tenor Flancy. I'm a French Canadian. I never saw the poor fellow before. 
It seems to me your voice is the same voice I heard on the telephone. Well, coincidence and an accident, a quirk of fate, one of those things dismissed before. They wheeled him out of here ten minutes ago. He said he was going to commit suicide. I was only trying to be of help. Be of help? What kind of help could she be of? Oh, Elsie. to the phone, but I keep trying anyway. She'll come to the phone one of these days. If there's anything to true love at all, she'll come to the phone. Hello. Is this Sunset 7349? May I speak to Elsie? Yes. No, this is not Dudley Bostwick. This is Roger Tenafrancy of Montreal, Canada. Uh, I'm a childhood friend of Miss Mandel Spiegel's. We, we went to kindergarten together. <laughs> what? Yes, I'll wait. Thank you. I'm going next door to listen while Gallant Knight wins the first. Precious time is going to win it. That's what you think. Silly, Tom said precious time was going to win, didn't he? He's in love, isn't he? Okay, I don't know why, but precious time won. You get 80 for 10. How do you do it? Spade. Spade! How'd he win? By a nose. You look him up in the race report. The slowest, the cheapest, the worst horse in the race, and the worst jockey. What's the matter with my luck? How much did you lose? 50 cents. You should never gamble. Why not? Because you always bet 50 cents. You have no more faith than a plea, that's why. Hey, Nick. How do you like this? That's not bad. Hang around. You can wait on table. Hey, Wesley. Can you play that again tonight? I don't know for sure, Mr. Nick, but I can play something. Good. You hang around, too. Hello, Nick. What do you want to come here for? You're too big a man for a little honky tonk. Ah, uh, Nick. Important people never come here. I don't drink. What do you want? Nothing much. Nothing at all. You know me, friendly Freddy. Yeah, I know you. Anything to make a dollar for Freddy. Since when do you have B girls working this trap, Nick? I don't have none of that, and you know it. Nobody gets a cut on any drinks sold here. I see. Who was the blonde? What blonde? Just went out with a big guy. How do I know who she was? Kitty. Kitty something. Kitty Duval. Duval? That don't sound right. Was she ever in Chicago? Was she ever in Chicago? Maybe. Maybe she was in Hawaii. Maybe she was in Zamboanga. I don't ask for geography with every 10-cent beer I sell. 
If she was in Chicago, there will be a record on her. What are you driving at? Don't get excited, Nick. It's bad for you. I'll worry about me. You worry about you. I am, Nick. I'm going to need a couple of hundred at the end of this week. Yeah, I don't know where you're going to get it from. I think I do. Listen, I got no use for you or anybody like you. I don't like your personality. I'll be back tonight. Do yourself a big favor. Don't come back tonight. Don't get into trouble, Nick. Losing an old friend, Nick. Every time that guy comes into this place, I get burned up. He's a no good stool pigeon. There's nothing he won't do. Last month, McGovern's place was closed on a tip that girls was rolling drunk. One guess who tipped the cops. One guess who sent the girls in there. Tell me one thing. Do my best. What does he want to bother people for? He's sick. He's no good. He hurts little people. Sit down, friend. Relax. I'll break his head if he tries any of his stuff in here. This is my joint. I got a good joint. There's nothing wrong here. Hey, comedian. Stick to your dancing tonight. I think you're okay. Thanks, Nick. Gosh, I'm on my way at last. Hey, well. Do some more of that tonight. That's fine. Hello, is that you, Ma? Harry. <laughs> Is it Madge Lobowitz? Is what what? Is the name Mabel Lepescu? What name? The name the initials ML stand for. The initials on your bag. No. Margie Longworthy? No. Midge Lowry? My initials are JT. John? Martha Lancaster. No. Joseph? That's my first name. Everybody calls me Joe. The last name is a tough one. I'll help you a little. I'm Irish. Is it just plain Mary? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm Irish, too. At least on my father's side. English on my mother's side. I'm Irish on both sides. Mary is one of my favorite names. I guess that's why I didn't think of it. I met a girl in Mexico City once named Mary. She was an American from Philadelphia. She got married there, in Mexico City, I mean, while I was there. That was very confusing because I was under the impression we were in love. At least I was never know about anybody else. She was engaged to another man, you see, and uh, her mother was with her, so they went through with it. That must have been, oh, six or seven years ago. Probably had three or four children by now. You still in love with her? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure. Yeah, I suppose I am. I didn't know they were engaged until a couple of days before they were married. I thought I was going to marry her. Kept thinking all the time about the kind of kids we'd be likely to have. My favorite was the third one. The first two were fine, handsome and fine and intelligent. But that third one, he was different. Dumb and goofy looking. I liked him a lot. When she told me she was going to be married, I didn't feel so badly about the first two. It was that dumb one. Do you have children? Yes, two. 
son and a daughter. Oh, wonderful. Do they look like you? Well, why are you sad? I was always sad. Who are you waiting for? No one. I'm not waiting for anybody either. My husband, of course. Oh, yeah. Sure. He's a lawyer. He's a great guy. I like him. You have responsibilities. One and thousands. As a matter of fact, I feel responsible to everybody. At least to everybody I meet. I've been trying for three years to find out if it's possible to live what I think is a civilized life. A life that can't hurt any other life. You're famous? Very. Utterly unknown, but very famous. Would you like to dance? All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't dance. I didn't think you'd like to. To tell you the truth, I don't like to dance at all. I don't even like to walk. Because of the champagne? No, all the time. I guess it's because I never got anywhere walking. Were you ever in Paris? In 1934 and again in 1937. What month of 1937? September and part of October. I was there in October and November that year. Well, we were there at almost the same time. Were you married? Engaged. Mother sent me to Paris hoping I'd find someone else, he said. I wish I'd stayed through November. Are you still in love with me? Is it the champagne? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, partly at least. If you don't ever see me again, will you be very unhappy? Very. I'm so pleased. Please don't get up. Goodbye. Bye. Paper, mister? How many have you got this time? Eleven. this place. Can you use a great lyric tenor? A great lyric tenor? Who? Me. I'm getting too old to sell papers. I don't want to holler headlines all the time. I want to sing. You can use a great lyric tenor, can't you? What's lyric about you? My voice. Oh. All right, sing. Let me hear you again about a year from now. Honest? Did you like it too, mister? Very lyric. What part of Greece? Salonica. Lyric, huh? That's what I thought. Don't wait a year. Come back a little later with some papers. You're a great singer. Thanks. Thanks, mister. So long. When I wish I was smiling, sure it's 
what I'm talking about. You couldn't tell me what you meant if you knew what you meant. Hi, Joe. Rasmus. Next. Rasmus. Rasmus. Joe. Rasmus. Two bits. Pacific Street Restaurant, Saloon, and Entertainment Palace. Good afternoon, Nick speaking. Oh, is there a deadly bus working a joint? Hello? Hello, Elsie. You're, you're coming down? She's coming down. No, I won't drink. Oh, gosh, Elsie. Is that good? I don't know, but it's honest and ambitious. Then it works along into this little repeat. A most satisfying demonstration of the present state of the American body and soul. Son, you're a genius. I go on in front of an audience for the first time in my life tonight. They'll be delighted. Hey, where'd you learn to dance? I never took a lesson in my life. I'm a natural born dancer. Really? And comedian, too. You can make people laugh? Well, I can be funny, but they won't laugh. Well, that's odd. How, how, why not? I don't know why. They just won't laugh. Well, would you care to be funny now? I'd like to try out a new monologue I've been thinking about. Please do, and if it's funny, I promise you I'll roar with laughter. All right. <laughs> this is it. I'm up at Sharky's on 3rd Street. It's a quarter to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Wednesday, the 11th of October. What I've got is a headache and a 1918 nickel. What I want is a cup of coffee. If I buy a cup of coffee with a nickel, I've got to walk home. I've got an eight ball problem. I'm thinking it over like I always do. What happened? My ear aches, my ear. What do I do? I get confused. I go out and buy the morning paper. What do I want with the morning paper? What I need is a cup of coffee and a good used car. Maybe the headline is about me. I take a quick look. No! The headline is not about me. It's about a monster 7,000 miles away. I'm here. Who's a monster? Who's behind the eight ball? I turn around. Everybody's behind the eight ball. Take it easy, Crump. Son, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard, or seen, for that matter. Then why don't you laugh? Well, I don't know yet. I'm always getting funny ideas that nobody will laugh at. It may be that you stumbled headlong into some new kind of humor. But what good is it if it doesn't make anybody laugh? Well, there are kinds of laughter, son. I 
I must say in all truth that I am laughing, although not out loud. I want to hear people laugh. Out loud! They may catch on, son. Give them time. Give them time. Let's go, Krupp. So long, Joe. So long. Hey, play number six, will you? Hey, there's a horse named McCarthy going in the fifth today. Yeah. Bet everything you have on McCarthy. You're crazy. That horse is a double cross and no good. I wouldn't bet a nickel on him. You bet everything you got on McCarthy. I don't need money. What makes you think McCarthy's going to win? McCarthy's name is McCarthy, isn't it? The horse is going to win, that's all, today. What? You just do what I tell you and everything will be all right. He's a good kid, Nellie, God bless her. McCarthy likes to talk, that's all. Hey, Joe. You don't believe that kitty, do you, about being a burlesque? I believe dreams sooner than statistics. Sure is somebody. Call me a dentist. What's the matter? What happened? That's Kitty. She's up in her room crying. Crying? Yeah. I've been talking to her all this time and she won't stop. What's she crying about? I don't know. She kept talking and... And I couldn't understand anything. She kept telling me about a big house and a, and a lot of collie dogs running around and, and flowers and... Don't play that! Tom. Tom. I can't stand Kitty crying. You want to marry her? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I guess I love her, that's all. You sure now? All right, here. Take all this money and run next door to Frankie's and put it on the nose of McCarthy in the fifth. All this money on McCarthy? Yes, hurry up. It's nearly post time. Gee, Joe, McCarthy wins will be rich, huh? Get going, will you? Yeah. McCarthy. Just because you get a little lucky this morning, you gotta go to work and throw away 80 bucks. He wants to marry her. Suppose she don't want to marry him. Well, now why do you suppose she wouldn't want to marry a nice guy like Tom? Well, she's been in burlesque. She's had flowers sent to her by European royalty. She's dined with young men of quality and social position. She's above Tom. Joe, they were running when I got there and Frankie wouldn't take the bet. McCarthy didn't get a call until a stretch, and I thought we were going to save all this money. And then McCarthy wins by two links. Mm, what'd he pay, 15 to 1? Better, but Frankie wouldn't take the bet. Well, for the love of Mike. Gosh, we don't want about $1,500. Yeah. Take this money and go down to Schwabach a fry. And buy me some maps of the world. And on the way back, stop at one of those pawn shops on 3rd Street and buy me a good revolver and some cartridges. Now, what about Kitty? What are you going to do, study the map and then go out and shoot somebody? I want to read the names of some towns and rivers and valleys and mountains. What do you want with that revolver? I want to study it. I'm interested in things. And tell the man you don't know anything about firearms and you're trusting him not to cheat you. And don't pay more than $15. Joe, what are you sending me out for crazy things for all the time? They're not crazy, Tom. Now go get them for me, will you? What about Kitty? Let her cry. It'll do her good. Joe, if she comes in here while I'm gone, will you talk to her? Tell her about me. All right, now get going, will you? And don't load that gun. Just buy it and bring it here. <laughs> you don't catch me loading any gun. Wait a minute. Take these toys away. Well, I'll take them. Give them to some kid. No. Take them up to Kitty. Toys stop me from crying once. Shall I, Joe? Take them up to Kitty? You think they'll make her happy? They might. You get curious about the way they work. That's what they're for. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll take them up to Kitty. Mr. Nick. Yeah? Can I play the piano again? Well, sure. What do you think I'm paying you for? 
you going to pay me for playing the piano? I give you enough to get by on. Get money for playing the piano. Murphy's the name. Just an old trapper. Do you mind if I sit down? Be delighted. What'll you have? Beer. Sam's been drinking. Glass of beer, Nick. <laughs> Thanks. ever fell in love with a midget weighing 39 pounds. Can't say I have. Down in Gallup, 20 years ago, a fellow named Rufus Jenkins came to town with six white horses and two black ones. Said he wanted a man to break the horses for him. Had a meeting down at Parker's Mercantile Store, and finally it came to blows. Bashed a brass cospador over his head and ran away to Mexico. But he didn't die. Couldn't speak a word. Took up with a cattle breeder named Diago, educated in California. Spoke the language better than you and me. Said, Murph, your job was to feed them prize bulls. I said, fine, fine. What'll I feed them? I said, hay, lettuce, salt, beer, and aspirin. <laughs> Came to blows two days later. Over an accordion, he claimed I stole. I had borrowed it. Busted the accordion over his head. Ruined the finest accordion I ever saw. Grabbed a horse and rode back across the border. Texas. Got to talking with a fellow that looked honest. Turned out to be a ranger that was looking for me. Yeah, you were saying uh, a 39-pound midget. Will I ever forget that lady? <laughs> Will I ever get over that Amazon of small proportions? Will you? If I live to be 60. 60? You look more than 60 now. No, son. That's trouble showing in my face. Trouble and complications. Oh, that accounts for it then. Well, go ahead. Tell me more. My name was Rothstein, a mining engineer from Pennsylvania, looking for something worthwhile. <laughs> Mentioned two places in Houston. <laughs> I nearly lost an eye early one morning, coming downstairs. Bumped into a six-footer with a nine claw where his right hand was supposed to be. Said you broke up my home. I told the fella I was a stranger in Houston. Six foot tall and a nine claw, say, that's bad on the nerves. Kicked him right smack in the teeth when he made a swipe at me with his claw. I'd have lost an eye except for quick thinking. He rolled out in the cupboard, pulled a gun, fired seven times. I went on down the street, running, of course. Left town 20 minutes later, all dressed up in a woman's silk dress and feathered hat. Did you ever try to herd cattle on a bicycle? No. And I never fell in love with a midget weighing 39 pounds. Left Houston with 60 cents in my pocket. Gift of a girl named Lucinda. 
Walked 14 miles in 14 hours. Great big house. Barbed wire all around. Great big dogs. Dogs jumped up and came for me. I walked right through them. Growing older every second. Walked up to the door and knocked. An old man came to the door. Ninety if it was a day. Sawed off shotgun, too. Said, I ain't looking for trouble, Father. I'm hungry and thirsty. Name's Cavanaugh. Took me in and made mint juleps for the two of us. Said, you living here alone, Father? Says, drink your drink and ask no questions. If I was to tell you that that old southern gentleman was my grandfather, you wouldn't believe me, would you? I might. <laughs> well, it so happens he wasn't. It would have been romantic if he had been, though. Where did you herd cattle on a bicycle? Hackensack, New Jersey, 19 and 18. Hackensack, New Jersey? They don't herd cattle in Hackensack. They don't anymore. They did in 1918. One fella did least ways. Bookkeeper and Sam Gold. Straight from the east side of New York. Sombrero, Lariat, Bull Durham, two head of cattle, and two bicycles. Called his place the Gold Bar Ranch. Two acres, right out at the city limit. That was the year of the war, you'll remember. Yeah, I remember. But how about herding those cows on a bicycle? How'd you do it? Easiest thing in the world. Rode no hands. Had to. Otherwise, you couldn't lasso the cows. I worked with Sam Gold, and the cows ran away. Bicycles scared them. Never saw hide nor hair of them again. Broke poor Sam's heart. Took four aces, a deck of red cards, and walked to town. Poker. Fell in the game named Harry Selby liked to gamble. I told him with a smile. But I didn't think he'd care that the hundred dollars I wouldn't hold four aces the next hand. Called it. My cards were red on the blank side, the other cards are blue. And Plum forgot all about it. Showed him four aces. Would have been killed on the spot except for the hurricane that year. Hurricane? Why, you ain't forgot the Hackensack hurricane of 1918, have you? No. There was no hurricane in Hackensack in 1918 or any other year. There weren't? Then what in tarnation do you suppose all that commotion was? And how come I come to in Chicago, dream one down State Street at high noon? They must have scared you. No, that one did. Now you look up the papers of November 1918, and I think you'll find there was a hurricane in Hackensack. I remember stepping on the roof of a two-story building, floating northwest. Northwest? Now, son, don't tell me you don't believe me either. Of course I believe you. Living is an art, if not bookkeeping. It takes an awful lot of rehearsal for a man to get to be himself. You're the first man I've ever met who's really believed me. Number seven. Yeah. Say, uh, Joe, mm -hmm. if I'd have got there a bit sooner, Frankie would have taken the bet and we'd have had about $1,500 now. How much of it would you have given me? If she'd marry you, all of it. Would you, Joe? Mm -hmm. Joe, you think we'll ever have $80 again sometime for a race when there's a 15 to 1 shot that we like? The weather's good, the track is fast, they get off to a good start, our horse doesn't get a call until the stretch, and we think we're going to lose all that money and. And then he wins by a nose. I didn't quite get that. Well, you know what I mean. You mean the impossible. No, Tom, we won't. We were just a little late, that's all. We might. No, not likely. Well, and Joe, how am I ever going to get enough money to marry Kitty? I don't know, Tom. Maybe you aren't. Oh, Joe, I got to marry Kitty. You got to see the crazy room that she lives in. What kind of room? It's little. It crowds you in. It's bad, Joe. Kitty doesn't belong in a place like that. You want to take her away from there? Yeah. Yeah. I want Kitty to live in a house that there's room enough to live in. 
Kitty ought to have a garden or something. You want to take care of her? Yeah, sure, Joe. I ought to take care of somebody good. So I can feel good. Well, that means you'll have to get a job. What can you do? Well, well I finished high school, but I don't know what I can do. Well, sometimes when you think about it, what do you think you'd like to do? Well, I'd like to sit around like you, Joe, and have somebody run errands for me, and drink champagne, take it easy, never be broke, and, and not to worry about money. That's a noble ambition. Joe, I gotta do something for Kitty. I gotta. Get my hat. Yeah. You mean you're gonna get up? She's crying, isn't she? Yeah, but I've seen you sit in one place from 10 in the morning till 2 the next morning. Well, at my best, Tom, I just don't travel by foot, that's all. Come on, I'll find some way to stop her from crying. To children and small animals like little dogs that don't bite. To reforestation. It's working in my place. Has anybody made a complaint against me? Well, if it ain't a complaint, what is it? Grapevine. Look, Sarge, you've known me for years. Why do you... Listen, Sarge, for your information, the grapevine's name is Blick. He was here this morning, and I told him not to come back. He looks for trouble every place, and he always finds it. I don't break any laws, and you know it. I got to dive in the toughest part of town. Five years, nobody's been robbed, murdered, or gypped. I leave people alone. Your swanky joints uptown make trouble for you every night. All right, all right, I'll be careful. Start playing again. My ears have got a headache. Go to your dance, son. Trouble coming? Weasel named Blick. 
What kind of a weasel is this weasel, Dick? Very dignified. Toenails on his fingers. Anybody at all. You can count on me. Give Sam a hand, eat some food. Anything at all. I know a good man when I see one. For the beer? Hello, Dudley. Elsie! Oh, Elsie, you'll never know how glad I am to see you. I'm sorry about not answering your phone. I love you, Dudley. Just but... to see you. I was afraid I'd never see you again. It was driving me crazy. I didn't want to live, honest. I know you love me, Dudley, and I love you. But don't you see it's impossible? Maybe it isn't, Elsie. Love is for birds. They have wings to fly away on when it's time for flying. I know, I know. You told me before, but I can't help it, Elsie. I love you. Ah. Ah. We should have not. Oh, just go ahead with what you were doing. Oh, pardon, ma'am. Oh, please don't leave on account of us. And do have a lovely time. Mm. Nick, what kind of a journey are you running here? Very strict. No one escorted females. Hmm. Since when? Since now. Sergeant Finnegan called. That mouse and elephant's body? Spend your time at the movies the next couple of days. Movies? Give me a pain. All about love. Pain or no pain, for the next couple of days, the Flatfoots are going to be romancing you, so stay out of here. I always was susceptible to a man in uniform with a badge, a club, and a gun. All right, get going. We were just going. We were formerly models at Magnum. Yes. Next stage show, 10 o'clock. There's nobody in this joint. Hey, Kit Cox! Whoa, Jenny! Oh! And I shall be whiter than snow. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I was a sinner. I chewed tobacco and I drank liquor. But now I've been saved. Hallelujah. Save, 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 save. Hallelujah. 54 for your thanks. Millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. 
The Union must be preserved. You may fire when ready, Gridley. I'm gone below. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing yet. You wanted to visit a honky-tonk. Well, this is a honky-tonk, and I've had enough of it. No, wait. Oh, Joe, what are we going to do with this? Take it outside and give it to some worthy hold-up man. Wonderful guns. How should I know who's a hold-up man? Take it away, give it to somebody. Do I have to give it to somebody? Of course. Can I take it back and get some of our money? Stop talking like a tightwad. Go find somebody who appears to be in need of a gun and give it to him. Simply mobbed. Joe, how can I tell who's in need of a gun? Tom, you've seen good people who have needed guns, haven't you? Well, I, I don't remember. I might give it to the wrong kind of a guy, and he might do something crazy. All right, then give it to me. I'll find somebody. Here, here. Uh, here take this money and get me uh, this week's Time, Life, Look, Pick, and Click, and uh, 12 or 15 packages of gum. Life, Time, Look, Pick, and Click, and 12 or 15 packages of gum. That's right. All that gum, Joe? What kind? Oh, all kinds. Mix them up, any kind. Licorice, too? Oh, mm, licorice, by all means. Juicy fruit? Mm-hmm. Juicy fruit. Tutti fruity? Tutti. Is there such a gun? Oh, sure, Joe. That's the best kind. All right, then. Tutti fruity, too. Get all the kinds, any kind they're selling. Lifetime look, pick and click, and all the different kinds of gum. Mm -hmm. They're both mad. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, get, uh... Get some jelly beans, too, all the different colors. All right, Joe. And uh, the longest Panatella cigars you can find. Six of them. Six Panatellas. I got it. Ah, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, give, uh, give a newsboy a dollar. Okay, Joe. Give, uh, give an old man a dollar. Okay, Joe. And give the Salvation Army outside a couple of dollars and, uh, tell them to play that song that goes, uh, let the lower lights be burning, then the gleam across the wave. But the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way. Some poor dying, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Okay, Joe, I got it. Time, life, look, pick and click. All the different kinds of chewing gum that they're selling. Jelly beans, six pound of tele cigars, a dollar for a newsboy, a dollar for an old man, two dollars to the Salvation Army. But the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way. That's it, okay. I can't help it if he's crazy. Do you want to go back to where people aren't crazy? Oh, no, not the world. Oh, all right, then. Don't be telling me every minute that he's crazy. Well, you needn't be happy about it. Presbyterian? Went to a Presbyterian Sunday school. Fond of singing? On occasion. Get yourself a glass and sit down. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the wave. Some poor drowning, struggling. Fond of that song, used to sing it at the top of my voice. Never saved a seaman in my life. <laughs> I saved a seaman once. Huh? Well, it wasn't exactly a seaman, a fellow named Wellington. Heavy set sort of a fellow. Nice personality, but no friends to speak of, not until I came along, at any rate. In New Orleans, in the summer of the year of 1899. I was a lot younger then, of course, and wore no beard, but was regarded by many people as a man of means. You know anything about guns? <laughs> All there is to know. He didn't fight the Ojibwe's for nothing. Up in the Lake Kakanoka County in Michigan. Oh, about 1881 or two. Fought him right up to the shore of the lake. Made him swim for Canada. <laughs> One fellow in particular, an Indian named Harry Daisy. Well, uh, what sort of gun would you say this is? Any good? Well, that looks like a mighty nice hunk of shooting iron. That's a six-shooter. I shot a man with a six-shooter once. Got him right through the palm of his right hand. Lifted his arm to wave to a friend. I thought it was a bird. A fellow named Caraway. Larry Moore Caraway. Uh -huh. Well, uh, you know how to work one of these? <laughs> Do I know how to work it? Oh, hand me that little gun, son, and I'll show you all about it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, probably <clears throat> one of them new kind of six shooters after my time. 
Ain't missed a ninja in years. Uh, let's see now. I think get, get this, and then this is supposed to come up like oh, that's it. There it is. Uh, look all right? Oh, you got a good gun here, son. Yes, I'll explain it to you. See them little holes? Well, that's where you put the cartridges. Well, fine. Show me how it's done. Well, first you put them in one by one like this. There's one. There's two. Three. Four. Five. Uh, well, this six-shooter only holds five. Then you put the barrel back in place like that. You cock it. Then all you got to do is aim and fire. Oh, is it all set? Oh, ready to kill. Let me hold it. Uh, careful, son. Don't cock it. Many a man's lost a knife holding with a loaded gun. A rhino named Danny Donovan lost a nose. Ruined his whole life. Now, now, now. Hold it firm. Squeeze the trigger. Don't snap it. Spoils your aim. Fine. Well, let's see now if I can unload it. Of course you can. Thanks. I'm very grateful to you. It's a beaut, son. to it. Six nickels. It took me a little while, but I finally did it. It's scientific, really. With a little skill, a man can make a modest living beating a marble game. Not that that's what I want to do. I just don't like the idea of anything getting the best of me. A machine or anything else. There's no other way a man can be a success at anything. I've never seen you before in my life. But I can tell from the kind of clothes you wear and the kind of company you keep that you're a man who looks every problem straight in the eye and then goes to work and solves it. I'm that way myself. Well, it's, it's been wonderful talking to a nicer kind of people for a change. Well, uh, I'll be seeing you. So long. Goodbye, lady. You've got a good man there. Take good care of him. So long, Nick. Well, I'm a not neat weasel. You know, for a while there, I didn't think that young Assyrian was going to make it. Hey, you know that fella's got something. Get it all? Yeah. All right. Let's have some of that chewing gum. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tutti fruity, all right. You know, I've always wanted to see how much gum I could chew at one time. Tell you what, Tom. I'll bet that I can chew more at one time than you can. All right. I'll referee. All right. Did you get the, uh, get the jelly beans? Oh, yeah. Let's have a look at them. I had a little trouble finding them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same as ever. I can remember the first time I ever ate jelly beans. Baltimore, 1878. Mm -hmm. Joe, mm -hmm. what do you want to move Teddy into the park closet for? Huh? Nice room. There's two. And uh, three. Oh, please. Uh, good food, good clothes. Should be all right, Tom. Sure, I hope so. Don't you think she might get lonely up there? She ain't got anybody to talk to. There's never anybody anywhere for her to talk to except you. Me too? Mm-hmm. You know, you're the other half of that girl. You belong to that little kid in Ohio who once dreamed of living. I put her in that hotel so she can have a chance to gather herself together again. I, I want her to be lonely for a while so she can come together the way she was meant to be at the beginning. Uh, loneliness is good for people, Tom. And right now, it's the only thing for Kitty. Any more licorice? Hmm? Licorice? Oh! Sure, I guess we chewed all the licorice in, Joe. Mm -hmm. We still got clove, doublemint, spearmint, beech nut, tea berry, and juicy fruit. Mm -hmm. Teddy, Joe. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you really want to marry her, don't you? Honest, Joe. Mm -hmm. Except they haven't got any money. Mm-hmm. We got to figure out something. 
As you can do, it won't bother you very much. I wish I could. Carl, would you be embarrassed driving a truck? Say, yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, I like that. Travel and highways and little towns and coffee and hotcakes and beautiful valleys and mountains and streams and trees and daybreak and sunset. Mm -hmm. There is poetry in it at that. Oh. Yeah, that's the kind of work I ought to do, Joe. Yeah. Here's a nickel. Go call tuxedo 9994. Hmm. Just sit there and travel and look and smile and bust out laughing. <laughs> oh. Hey, Joe, can I take Kitty along with me sometime? I don't know. Ask for Mr. Keith. Oh, I have to talk to Mr. Keith. Mr. Keith. Take that gum out of your mouth for a minute. Mr. Keith. Yeah, that's right. They're getting him. Hello? You win, Tom. Hello, Keith. Joe. Fine. Forget it. Uh, have you a place for a good driver? I don't know. You haven't got a driver's license, have you? No, Joe, but I can get one. No, but you can get one easy enough. Install the union. You'll join later. Sure, call my vice president and say he drives for relaxation. Sure. What do you mean, tonight? Well, I don't see why not. All right. I'll send him right over. Uh, thanks. Am I going to get the job, Joe? He wants to take a look at you. How do I look, Joe? Put up your head. Stick out your chest. How do you feel? Fine. You look fine, too. Now, look, Tom. Here's, uh, here's ten bucks. He may want you to get into a truck and begin driving to San Diego tonight. Oh, I gotta tell Kitty. I'll tell her. Take good care of her, Joe. Don't worry about her, Tom. She'll be all right. Now, take a cab down to Townsend and Ford. The Keith Motor Transport Company. He'll be waiting for you. Get going. Okay. Joe. Joe. Thanks. Don't be silly. Have yourself a pleasant smoke. On your way. Give the slummers one each. All right, then. There you are. What do you think you're doing? Uh, really, dear, I'd like to. Oh, this is too much. I'd really, really like to, dear. Come on, now, take a big, deep draw. The mother of four children, and she's still looking for romance. Hey, where you guys been? We gotta have some entertainment around here. Can't you see them fine people from uptown? You said to come back at 10 for the second show. Did I say that? Sure yeah, you did. That's exactly what you said. Say, was the first show all right? That wasn't a show. There was nobody here to see it. How can it be a show where nobody sees it? I think people are afraid to come down to the waterfront on account of the strike. Yeah, come on back here. I want you to attend the bar for a while. Yes, sir. I'm gonna take a walk over to the pier. You society people made up your minds yet? Oh, uh... Have you any boilermakers? True boilermakers! Oh. oh, all right. Have you champagne? What do you think he's been pouring out of that bottle? Water or something? Have you any on ice? I got a dozen of them on ice. He's been drinking champagne in here day and night for a month now. Bring out the bottle. Bottle of champagne, Harry. Rattle the keys a little, son. Hiya, mama's now found it. All the way down the line. I came in a cab. Hmm. Bring a glass. Where's Tom? Getting a job tonight, driving a truck. Be back in a couple of days. Oh, Joe. 
Joe, I've got to talk to you. You look fine. Joe, I was never in burlesque. We were just poor. I tried other things. Here's to you, Katerina Koronovsky. Here's to you and Tom. Joe, he asked me to marry him. And he wanted to see him say goodbye. But he's too good for me. Tom's just like a little boy. Too many things have happened to me. Kitty, you are one of the few truly innocent people I've ever known. Now, he'll be back in a few days. Go on back to the hotel and wait for him. That's what I mean. I can't stand being alone. I'm no good, Joe. I've tried. I've tried awfully hard. I don't know what it is, but... I need... Oh, I don't know what to tell you, Kitty. I don't belong at the Park Plaza. But I've wanted all my life. Too late. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, you haven't hurt me. I've never known anybody like you. I don't know much about love anymore. But I know I love you. And I know I love Tom. I love you too, Kitty. Joe. What kind of a life can I give Tom? You're good for Tom. Tom's good for you. I think I should go back to the hotel and wait for him? I can't tell you what to do. I think it might be a good idea. Huh? Oh, Joe, it's so lonesome. Hmm. Might take a whole week, Kitty. Oh. Didn't you speak of reading a book? A book of poems? Oh, I didn't know what I was saying. Of course you knew. I think you'd like poetry. Wait here a minute. Well, please don't leave me, Joe. Please, don't leave me. Don't worry. Where are you going? To get you some books. Poetry. All right, Joe. Nick. He went for a walk. Shut up. Who are you? Harry. What's your name, sister? Kitty Duval. What's it to you? Where do you work? I'm not working just now. I, I'm looking for work. What kind of work? kind of work. You go jump in the bay. Don't give me any of your gutter lip. You can't talk to a lady that way in my presence. What'd you say? Well, you've got no right to hurt people. Who are you? Excuse me, mister, but it seems to me that you have no right to talk to the poor child like Shut that. Up, I said. Well, are you going to stand for such insolence? Are you? Come on, get out of here. Now then, let's start all over. What's your name? Kitty Duval. Where do you live? Until tonight, I lived at the New York Hotel, room 21. This evening, I moved to the Park Plaza. Oh, the Park Plaza, huh? It's a nice place. Where do you work? I'm looking for work. What kind of work do you do? I'm an actress. I see. What movies have I seen you in? I used to be in burlesque. 
You're a liar. It's the truth. What are you doing here? I... I came here to see if I could get a job. Doing what? Singing, dancing. You can't sing or dance. What are you lying for? I can, so I sang and danced in burlesque all over the country. You're a liar. You're from Chicago. Your name is Katerina Karanovsky. No. You served two years in the state pen. You're an ex-con. No, it's not true. I, I, I was in burlesque. My name is Kitty Duval, I tell you. I, I sang and I danced and I said lines, too. So you danced in burlesque, huh? Yes. All right, let's see what you did. No, I can't. It, 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 there's a new music and I haven't got the right clothes. There's music. Hey, you play something. Go on. All right, Kitty Duval. Get up on that stage. Get going now. Let me see you dance the way you did in burlesque all over the country. Start playing. But you said you could sing. to be any more naked than I am already. All right. I was never on a stage before, just now. I made up lies about myself because I was ashamed of the truth. Well, I'm not ashamed now. I'm proud. I'm proud because I never hurt anyone in my life. If you hurt anybody you can find who happens to be scared and weak, well, you finished hurting me because I just can't be hurt anymore. I'll tell you who I am. I am Katerina Karanowski. I guess you know who you are. Kitty! What are you doing up there? It's that man Blick. He made her do it. He beat up the old man, too. Dumb Tom. By the six shooter won't even shoot once. Show! Kitty, you'll love it in San Diego.
fucking mackerel. I heard a shot. What happened? Well, somebody tell me what happened. Just killed a man and don't even know his name. Fletch. Blake. That ought to look nice on a headstone. Sorry, God, for my license. You expect you'll hang for this? Just give me ten minutes ahead of the posse. That's all I want. Well, cheat the law, huh? No, no, no. I'm willing to take my punishment. Mm. If I'm caught. Hey, Kitty. Kitty, I got a job. Shh. What's this? Friends. Friend. Friend. I didn't like the way this victim spoke to ladies and hit gentlemen. I'm a man of few words, but here's action. This man's thoroughly unreliable. I killed a man, didn't I, son? Now, where do you get that stuff? Killed a man. Uh, I fired a shot at him, didn't I, boy? Sure, but you missed him. I could have swore he was as cold as a mackerel. He was. But this is what did it. And he's not dead? No, he's not dead. He would have been kind of nice if he had been. <laughs> what are you standing there for? Nobody said anything profound. You want to get married, don't you? Now, that's a silly question. Don't even answer it, Tom. You do, don't you, Tom? Well, then why don't you beat it? You've got a girl, you've got a job, and you've got your health. What more do you need? Well, who's going to take care of you, Joe? Oh, I'm sick of this side of you. Bless you and beat it. Just a minute. Ain't nobody getting married unless I kiss the bride first. All right, Kit. <laughs> Try following that, young fella. I better be getting out of here. I can feel her changing her mind. I'll never change my mind, Kit. Tom is faithful, handsome, and, and hardworking. Who? Me, Kitty? <laughs> Women find me irresistible. Kit, did I ever tell you about the time I fell in love with a midget weighing 39 pounds? Not you, son. Mm-hmm. Down in Gallup, 20 years ago, a man named Rufus Jenkins came to town with six white horses and two black ones. Said he wanted somebody to break those horses. Gift of a girl named Lucinda, who had an iron claw where her right hand ought to be. Said you broke up my hole. <laughs> <laughs> Enough is enough. 